Hello and welcome to the beautiful Luslavica European Music Center for the first discussion during this Seifert Jazz Days 2021. The violin in jazz gets a little attention, you know, mainly because there's only so few musicians who delved into it. I mean, probably a lot less than, let's say, saxophone or something like that, you know. And uh, it needed somebody like Spinyev and Michael. And they, it, the music called for them. Mm -hmm. And uh, if I was sitting there and I saw the situation, I'd say, well, guys, we're playing like this. Of course, no talking, but, but you know, this vibe, uh, we play like this, play like that. But we haven't put anything like that on the violin because you look at Stuff Smith, Charlie, uh, Charlie, who's, who's, who's a couple of violin, jazz violins, um, who played swing mostly, mm. and, and of course bebop. But uh, Spinyev came at the right time to put that instrument on the map. That's the point. I mean, if it hadn't been him, is it the times? Do the man, does the man make the times, or does the times make the man? An eternal discussion. Uh, but in this case, I think. Um, there was a call and a need for the violin to be played in a modern way, mm. which is what Spinier definitely did on the instrument. So when we hear him play and, and sing <clears throat> some of the records with Jack and with Richie and all that, of course he has the best bands in the world. Yeah. Um, some of them are, I don't remember every type, track or something like that, but when he came on the scene and the musicians knew about him, we said, who the heck is this guy playing like that on this instrument? <laughs> Above all. <laughs> It was, it was a, you know, like a, a, a quandary. It was like a why, but of course the way he played just obliterated any other comments. And just what's the that? Speaking of Zypher, it took the, the the modern art of playing uh, the, the music, like John Coltrane, especially John Coltrane, the phrasings, the melodies, on the approach, uh, how to behave with the music, uh, the modern kind. Uh, and speaking of Seifert, it's like extensions of, uh, of um, John Coltrane's uh, thinking or life, musical life. His most, uh, uh, most characteristic album, reflective of his style, was Man of the Light. He uh, did something nobody did before, before him as a violin. He played a solo violin concert. And that uh, solo violin record was uh, released to support him when he was uh, that it was found out that he was uh, suffering of cancer. That musicians label uh, run by Volga, Volga and Downer did this, and uh, in America he was forced to play fusion music. He recorded an album called Zbigniew Zajer for Capitol Records, and I think Zbyszek was not happy with it. He was much more happy with Passion, his final record, where he would use his uh, uh, arranging ideas and string orchestra and uh, his ideas uh, uh, bordering on uh, drawing from Szymanowski's music, you know, contemporary music, classical music. It was completely innovative and people in America were st absolutely uh, simply stunned. The main thing is that the guy played Unbelievable on the violin. It was incredible. I mean, the, the main thing, the main CD or the main listening is the solo record. I don't know what the name of it is, but he just does a solo record that is just beyond belief. I give it to everybody who I meet who plays violin. I said, Do you know this guy? And most of them do not, but uh, they do after I give them the, same, the music. They, they definitely have an awareness of who he is. And, uh, um, the other thing was that I didn't know until maybe after he passed that he was a pretty fine saxophone player, which of course is my instrument, and therefore my interest level goes up a bit. And uh, he, he, he played, you know, fairly free, but he did put the violin music into, I mean, the, the uh, saxophone music, the pentatonics, the use of uh, altered chords, a lot of stuff like that. He did put that into his violin play. So he was a pretty broad musician who could do a lot of things from, uh, you know, beautiful ballads, <coughs> hence um, beautiful and inspiring, mostly inspiring. I mean, the guy was really something else. If he had been alive, if he was still alive, he would have been very productive. He was obviously a serious artist who took to his responsibilities uh, deeply.
if there's anything about Coltrane and, and Spiggy, it's the spirit which they play. And, 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 and most unusually, I came across it in, the, in, in, in an American second-hand vinyl shop <laughs> of all places. Uh, and um, I took it back uh, and, and started listening to it. And then I got um, his Capitol album. I don't think it had a title, just Zygmunt Ziefert. Um, and and uh, it, it, it was a source of you know great fascination to me, um, hearing how he translated um, the ideas of John Coltrane onto um, onto um, the violin. I actually wanted to sort of uh, mention this because you know obviously uh, listening to A Stigmatic again. You know, it's amazing how much uh, Kameda drops out completely. You know, he does his solos, he takes his time, he, he uses all his different methods and techniques and ideas and then drops away. But then the intensity of the band is such that, I mean, you know, perhaps uh, Dave can tell us a bit more about um, his time with Miles, you know, in the same way that the sheer presence of someone like <coughs> Miles or Kameda could, could make you play a certain way, you know. And, and you know, the fact is that, you know, and, and obviously the, the silences between the notes or between the playing and the not playing are, are almost as important as each other, you know what I mean? The, the, the first track on Astigmatic, as far as I can tell, is pretty much around one chord centre, you know, it's, it's a, just a rhythmic vibe that they sustain for quite a while, you know. But the, the personality and the, and the kind of just just using any means to get your ideas out and being you being 100 percent yourself those are the sort of things that really actually make you stand out rather than just saying well i can play as good as this or i've i've uh, i can do all these songs and i can you know i've learned all these techniques etc etc you know um we live in an age where there's there's so many good players around technically brilliant players and yet you know where are the personalities and the, and the great individual sort of musicians. The music is a, uh, has a special atmosphere. He hardly communicated with words. He never gave any instructions or hardly any instructions how to play. But by force of the music and of his personality, he directed his music and they played according to his wish somehow. Somehow it's like Miles Davis. It's very kind of... Uh, mysterious, it's uh, telepathic, it's uh, the, the, the force, uh, the, 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 the waves that are going from the leader to the sideman. He was introvert, that, that for sure, but he was also one for us, uh, he, was, uh, uh, he was caring about us. This is very colorful and full of meanings, full of, of colors, of impressions. Uh, and this is really unique uh, in 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 Komenda's music. His uh, approach to uh, uh, to the to the uh, uh, harmonical um, uh, structures and uh, also rhythmical and the form structures is so unique, unique that I have to really when I play his music concentrate very much, as it's very melodic, but unusual is um, something something in this music which i uh, never heard playing like um, music by john coltrane charlie parker whatever all kind uh, other uh, musicians way shorter um, uh, this feeling that means that Cometa had had something 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 else i I think the interesting thing with Kameda is obviously he was a composer as well as a, a fine instrumentalist. And so the first thing I, the first sort of impact it had on me was, was much more modest, was maybe just hearing his uh, music for Rosemary's Baby, you know, and uh, experiencing that soundtrack, you know, to this day, you know, if I think of that film, I just that music just sends sort of tingles up my spine. It was so kind of. You know, it's it's pretty creepy. It's very atmospheric, um, and then really going back to listening to Astigmatic, you know, this week has been, yeah, you know, it's been a wonderful experience actually, because uh, you know this this as as many have said, this is a landmark album. You know, this is a landmark album in jazz, and it basically 
was really a, a you know a completely European vision of jazz. And uh, you know, as, as Dave was rightly pointing out, the passion with which these guys were playing, I mean, kind of really independent of the kind of the New York, the heart of it maybe in New York back in the day. You know, they they were creating this stuff for themselves. And the passion and the kind of drive and the energy that's just pouring out there, you know, Stanko just tearing the daylights out of his trumpet, you know, it's like, that's extraordinary. And you just think, well, you know, where did that come from? And obviously, you know, in the climate they were in, the repressed regime they were living under, you know, the, the fact that they came out with this stuff with such, you know, originality and such sort of forceful personalities, it really, you know, it, it stands the test of time, you know, it, it, you know, it is timeless, it's timeless music. And I think jazz community lives with this, uh, with the, this, the legend, the myth of Comeda ever since. And as time goes by, the music is growing stronger and stronger and stronger. You know, I think Comeda, you know, obviously the fact people are still covering his music now, still, you know, creating albums and tributes to him, the fact we're talking about him and others like him just shows that you know that forceful personality and that strength of personality endures over many many years you know um, and I guess because sadly they did you know die young then then that legend becomes fixed. From my perspective from my point of view I would say that uh, Peter Kameda and Sidney Asafet were very individual artists um, uh, Christoph Komeda was a very strong and very original composer um, concerning songs, concerning melodies, that, uh, the competitions he did, he did for the film scores of Roman Polanski and of other um, uh, Polish filmmakers. Um, uh, he was a master of um, stretching of stretch forms. So the, the pieces on Astigmatic, for example, I think about 20 minutes and more. So, and it, it, it's always surprising. It's coherent and it's surprising at the same time. It makes a message as a competition and it puts in to the improviser, which is um, a big mastery for me. Um, and, and in terms of Kameda, you know, he clearly had a very, very promising career ahead of him. Uh, to, to have broken into Hollywood and to be, you know, working on major film soundtracks and, and clearly having a, you know, surrounding himself with the best musicians as well. I mean, you know, that, you know, the guy obviously just had a, a lifetime of, of creativity and music ahead of him and it was cut, you know, terribly short, you know. May they rest in peace, Komeda and Spiggy. They were, yeah, yeah. They made a great contribution to the world, to the music, to the music of the world.